Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Kate Shannon Biddle, and I am the Dean of Students at the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. It is my pleasure to welcome you today as we award degrees to our 2022 Harris graduates. I would first like to introduce Deputy Dean Ethan Bueno de Mesquita to share some thoughts with our graduates. Ethan? Hello, class of 2022. It is nice to finally meet you in person. <laughs> you might remember me from uh, such movies as What's a Coordination Trap or Why Doesn't Foreign Aid Work? <laughs> All right, so we're here today, the faculty, the staff, your families, your friends, your fellow students, to celebrate your remarkable time here at the University of Chicago. You came to us, most of you, to learn new skills, a toolkit that would help you as you build your careers as effective policy professionals. And we have great confidence that those skills, be they in data analysis, microeconomic modeling, computer programming, or remembering that a strategy in an extensive form game is a that's right, complete contingent plan, A's for all of you, <laughs> are going to serve you well no matter where your professional careers take you. But you're also commencing on those careers in policy at a time when the great policy challenges facing us require more than just technical skills. A time when across the globe we seem to be renegotiating our understandings of some of the most fundamental questions. What is the good that policy and government ought to be advancing? What institutions will allow us to accommodate radically different visions of that good while still living together peacefully in a society? And what are the limits of the accommodations we should be willing to make to one another? What are the basic obligations placed on us by our past, our present, and our future? And who, if anyone, has a right to hold us accountable to those obligations? Fortunately, time at a great university is always about more than just learning skills. Universities offer us a precious space in which to reflect and grapple with and deepen our thinking about the most profound challenges that we face as human beings and as citizens. Your time here, I know, has been, if anything, perhaps a little too full of such opportunities. But it's been our pleasure and our honor to help guide you through that process, to watch you meet extraordinary adversity with grace and with perseverance, to teach and to learn from you. We're incredibly proud of all that you've accomplished. We're excited to see what comes next. We're counting on you. 
And now, I'd like you to ask you to pause the lecture, go take the Canvas quiz to make sure that you've understood all of this. <laughs> when you come back, if I can figure out how to make it work, I'm going to send you to breakout rooms <laughs> for small group discussion, then we'll get back together. Congratulations. Deputy Dean Ryan Kellogg will now introduce our student speaker. Good afternoon, congratulations. I'm here to introduce our student speaker, Kashif Ahmed. Kashif Ahmed is a graduate of the MPP program with a certificate in international development policy and a fellow at the Pearson Institute and EPIC. His parents immigrated from Bangladesh to Connecticut shortly before he was born. He went on to complete his bachelor's degree at McGill University in international development studies with a minor in economics. After spending most of his professional life in Uganda, Peru, and Sierra Leone, he was inspired to better understand the use of evidence-based policy to fight poverty in the global south. At Harris, he worked at a as a research assistant for, for, for professors Andrela Dubé, Fiona Berlig, and Raul Sanchez de la Sierra in projects spanning Pakistan, India, Dem the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the United States. In his second year, he co-chaired the student-run International Development Policy Association and was a member of the HSG's Academic and Election Governing Committees. After Harris, he hopes to take the skills he learned and join global efforts to enact and scale socially impactful policies in his role at ID Insight in their Delhi office. I present to you Kashif Ahmed. Thank you for the kind introduction. To my mother, who immigrated to the United States 30 years ago from Bangladesh, wherever you are, here's to the life you imagined and the future we imagined together. It is an honor to have this opportunity to speak on behalf of the class of 2022 at the Harris School of Public Policy. To our loved ones and in the Harris community in the crowd, we are here because of you. Today, we celebrate all of us. From day one, I imagine our cohort quickly discovered how unique an education Harris truly is with its degrees tailored to a diversity of dreams. Unlike earlier experiences, where norms placed us with peers at a similar stage of life, all of us decided to come here at different points in our careers, and that variety has served well to enhance our experience. It is nearly always an important decision in timing, and ours was no exception given the pandemic. Many of us left families, jobs, and homes behind to dedicate ourselves to public policy amidst a great deal of uncertainty in our outcomes. To all who made this sacrifice, I salute you. My peers today are diverse not only in background, but in the events that led us here. Often it is a unique moment that can lead one to further study. For me, it was a Colombian friend while working in Sierra Leone with no Harris affiliation who convinced me to consider public policy for the first time. I have heard from countless others who had a personal connection or challenge that brought them here. From all walks of life, we came in with curiosity and underwent a standardized framework to policy making that worked across disciplines. Over the past two years, we have seen how ineffective policies can lead to loss, as COVID has taken away the lives of more than six million people around the world and struck us with disastrous societal consequences. We are experiencing a persistence of deadly conflict, environmental degradation, polities leaving behind the underprivileged, and political polarization that impedes social harmony. The media coverage a crisis gets is contingent on the skin color of the community it affects. In this very country, the last few weeks reflect the omnipresent fact that our republic fails to protect children in Uvalde, black Americans in Buffalo, and other minority groups from assault weapons, domestic terrorism, and white supremacist violence. The current state of the world makes our need for policies that cure the ills of society far more important. This past winter, as the Omicron variant of COVID radiated across the globe, a message stuck out to me on Twitter. Matt Chrisman, a podcaster, said the following, my politics are simple. I want my adulthood to be how I imagined adulthood would be like when I was a kid, a thing no one in history has ever experienced. While a hyperbole to some, the core message remains the same. 
We should imagine a world where most children can not only realize their own dreams, but the dreams they have for others. At Harris, we embrace the idea that not all well-intentioned policies are created equal, and that we must rely on evidence to solve our most important problems. While easy, useful, it was not designed to be easy, and sacrifices were made. For every virtual class, late night, early morning, and time of doubt, I promise that it was worth it. Without adversity, we can get complacent. Sometimes being outside of your comfort zone is the more, most important for your growth and the people there with you. Perhaps you remember when you didn't get the grade you thought you deserved and wondered what else could have been done. An email that informed you of your failure to progress past an interview or waiting for weeks with crossed fingers only to hear back from a job, never hear back from a job you were so excited about. Not being selected for something you wanted to be a part of here. Maybe some of your greatest challenges were completely unexpected and you thought about the life you would have had otherwise. And in those moments, there are emotions that you vividly remember overcoming you. But today, there are different emotions. Today, you are happy and proud. Look back at those moments and smile, for it is those moments you could not that make a smile today more powerful. Most of us spent the entirety of the last academic year away from the physical classroom. While our recent return to in-person learning was more than welcome, I'd encourage you to think about the positives of that year. For one, you might have taken more advantages of the opportunities this year, or it could have led to extra time with your loved ones while advancing your career, or taught you more than you thought it would. Today may be the last time that every one of us is in the same place. But remember what we learned back then. A chance to learn and connect when we're far from one another is always a click away. When it was once possible to be facing your camera all day, this year the endurance required to both attend to Harris and your life outside might have startled you. But remember what it was like to meet people for the first time this fall and cultivate our relationships in a new setting. After succeeding through these changes, we open doors that may not have existed before. Outside of the classroom, the graduates today here have balanced class and work, won competition and awards, published writing, operated their own organizations, and engaged with the rest of campus, as well as the city of Chicago. We are headed to destinations all over the world, some brand new ones, a sacrifice made to pursue our passions. For many, Harris served as a bridge to a new sector of further study, and for others, it provided them to take, uh, the tools to take themselves to new heights in the field they love. And with each consecutive year, the roots of a supportive alumni network ingrain our surroundings. We all have heard of a sto the story of an alumnus that has contributed to the visions we have for our career. Often, it is someone who came to Harris in a far different time and place. So while today is a celebration of our achievements, I stand here with a request for all my peers. Let Harris not simply be a short-term commitment. We all have a role in shaping its principles for years to come, as much as any other alumni. Reflect on how the people in your life have supported you on this journey, the, and the people at Harris who shape you the person you are when you walk down this stage. Sometimes it is a candid moment that makes all the difference. Today I will share one of those moments for me. It was an email last summer from a professor after I confided that I was struggling with staying engaged in his discipline. He thanked me for being honest with him and told me he thought there was a surplus of happiness and success I could find if I kept searching. His advice came from his own past where he focused on checking off boxes while missing many trains. He ended his email by saying, once you devote yourself to what you like passionately, everything follows. The meaning of Harris to me is full, derived from small moments like these, and I encourage you to reflect on yours today. Return the favor to future policymakers, because this meaning will follow us the rest of our lives. But do not let becoming an alumnus of one of the world's prestigious institutions make you forget where you came from. It's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of perceived success and surrounding yourself with the pillars prescribed by the ruling class. Yet I have heard inspirational stories from those of you who have battled the odds to be where you are today in a world that was not designed for you, with nonlinear journey and a moments, that, moments that felt like failure. And I have been inspired by those of you who gave up a trusted road for a road less traveled. So let us dedicate ourselves to careers that excite us not only for the extrinsic rewards that may accompany it, but that connect to our values and make us happy. And if you're from a world where people are expecting you to be as successful as possible, where loved ones are counting on you, or an environment that puts you and those around you at risk, we are here to support you. Together, let's think about the factors that have created those inequalities, target our mentorship to those facing the same difficulties, and leave behind an easier path. Let us serve not only our clientele, but communities distinct from our own. Months after my professor told me he believed my surplus of happiness was still awaiting me, I still hadn't fully processed his message. I admittedly wanted to search for success where it best suited my skill set. I wanted to stay in my comfort zone, surround myself with ambitious colleagues, work hard, and then watch happiness come to me. 
I wanted to impress the people who didn't care about me like I did them. I wanted to win over the spaces that left me behind. I wanted to recreate the past conditions that led to the best memories of my life. But at the end of this fall, I read the epilogue of a Harris professor's book. He dedicated the work of his career to an internet cafe in Nairobi, where he met someone who kickstarted the pursuit of his pa passions. Like my other professor reflected on his earlier life, he confesses the goal to appeal to a younger version of himself, and quotes David Hume, in that we must let our quest for understanding be accompanied by a desire to act. It was then I realized I couldn't wait around for my dreams to find me. For all of us, they're waiting to be found, they're waiting for a perspective, and you need theirs just as much. There are people dying to shake up the world, waiting for you in a San Francisco conference room. There are children who you will smile with in Louisiana, Iowa, and North Carolina, entrepreneurs you'll meet across Mexico, bureaucrats ready for you to join their team in Delhi and Manila, and future classmates you will learn with in Philadelphia and New Jersey. There are ambassadors in need of your ideas in Manhattan and Budapest, policymakers who will support you in DC and Sierra Leone, educators excited to teach something new all over Peru and Colombia, and a hospital in need of hope in Bangladesh. There are campaigns ready to train you in Texas and Florida, new friends looking for you in Shanghai and Denver, urban planners that will inspire you in Tokyo and Toronto, and impact investors ready for your pitch in Seoul and Mumbai. Your future research collaborators are ready to partner with you in Boston and Zurich. Nonprofits are waiting for you in Pakistan and Nigeria. Old friends are waiting for you in Costa Rica and Beijing. There's natural beauty you can't wait to show your children in Chile and Iceland. There is life outside of mankind waiting for your protection in South Africa and Brazil. There's colleagues who have a seat saved at their dinner table for you in Istanbul and Buenos Aires. There's a mentor in Connecticut waiting for your email. There is someone who is ready to love you waiting in London, and people who will always love you back home in Southern California, Venezuela, Myanmar, and Ethiopia. There are people who will change your life forever that are sitting somewhere in Nairobi that are here with you in Chicago today. Your journey has just begun, so embark on your quest, follow your passions, and create the world you think the future deserves. Even the most evidence-based approach to change requires some imagination. Thank you, and Craig Ross to the class of 2022. <laughs>I will now introduce our alumni speaker, Kelly Suzanne Salisbury. Kelly Suzanne Salisbury is a proud native of Chicago's South Side and feminist advocate, writer, and podcaster. She is a program officer at Woods Fund Chicago, a foundation that funds and partners with nonprofit organizations advancing racial, economic, and social equity and justice through community organizing and public issue advocacy. Prior to Woods Fund, Kelly worked at the City of Chicago as a Deputy Policy Director in the Office of Mayor Rahm Emanuel and as the Director of Policy and Outreach at the Chicago Commu Commission on Human Relations, respectively. She also has several years' experience in the nonprofit sector with organizations advancing civic engagement and racial, economic, and gender justice and LGBTQ rights. rights. She lives with her wife and their two dogs in the Bronzeville neighborhood on Chicago's South Side. Please join me in welcoming Kelly Suzanne Salisbury. Good afternoon. It's good to be with you on this wonderful occasion. I would like to thank the UChicago Harris community for the distinct honor and pleasure of speaking with you today. I'd like to especially thank Dean Catherine Baker and the Harris Alumni Relations Office, especially Maggie El Marakbi and Jody Daly. I'd also like to thank my wife Tracy, who is with me today, and our two dogs, Monty and Bella, who are at home. <laughs> And last but not least, I'd like to thank and congratulate you, the Harris Class of 2022, with excitement. Congratulations on surviving the stats and econ problem sets and the University of Chicago where fun goes to die. <laughs> Just kidding. 
And to those of you on your way to becoming economists and statisticians, congratulations on busting the curve for your classmates who majored in liberal arts in undergrad. <laughs> yeah, I'm still bitter. <laughs> Seriously though, I wish you and your families a heartfelt congratulations on this special occasion. For those of you not from Chicago, I hope you took the time to enjoy Chicago's lakefront, a Cubs or White Sox baseball game, a Bulls basketball game, Garrett's popcorn, and a char dog from Wiener Circle in the Lakeview Boys Town neighborhood. You can't leave Chi-Town without having done at least one of those things. I graduated from the Harris School in 2013, and I can't believe that nine years have gone by so quickly. When I received the gracious invitation to speak with you today, I was shocked. So shocked that I thought the invitation had been sent to me in error, but then I saw the email was addressed to me. After the initial shock came joy and then anxiety. I thought to myself, why of all people was I chosen? What am I supposed to say? Who cares what I have to say? Will I bore people? These were the thoughts running through my mind. After several deep breaths and reflection, however, I remembered to check my assumptions and manage my expectations. I realized that I didn't need to give a stereotypical American commencement address full of axioms, pretentious wisdom, or preachy advice. Rather, I wanted to celebrate your achievements with you, share my story, my life and professional experiences leading up to and after Harris, the lessons I've learned along the way, and hopefully offer you some encouragement. My road to Harris was neither expected nor linear, but when I reflect on it, not surprising either. I've had a long time interest in civic engagement, politics, advocacy, and racial, economic, and gender equity and justice, thanks to my parents and other elders in my family. I grew up on the south side of Chicago to parents who were active in local politics. My parents' involvement in the movement to elect Harold Washington, Chicago's first black mayor, made a huge impact on me as a young child. They volunteered at voter registration drives and took my older sister, Nicole, and me to see Mayor Washington speak and to political rallies at Operation Push and the UIC Pavilion. Family discussions about current events and politics were a staple at the dinner table. In undergrad at Wellesley College, I became a feminist and was active, oh, hello there, <laughs> and was active in several student organizations. So all of this to say that the seeds for my eventual path to U Chicago Harris were planted during my childhood. But as a 22-year-old at the time, I had no clue how to parlay my interests, skills, and talents into a viable career path. Some of my classmates at Wellesley knew exactly what they wanted to do what careers or graduate studies they wanted to pursue after undergrad, but not me. The first lesson I would learn during this time that still sticks with me today is the importance of demonstrating courage by charting your own path. Immediately after undergrad, I left the US to work in Paris for a year instead of going to graduate school. Now, my parents and aunts were not happy about this at all. But I did it anyway, and on a shoestring budget. I lived in Paris in the 13th district in Place d'Italie and worked as an English teaching assistant in a working class suburb. I had fallen in love with French while in college. And since I wasn't ready to go directly to graduate school and I needed to work anyway, I figured, you know, why not work in France? It was an exciting and fun year of teaching and getting to know the students, improving my French, learning to navigate living and working in a different country and in a different language, making friends that I have to this very day 
20 years later. And having enriching life experiences and unforgettable conversations that broadened my understanding and horizons of people, perspectives, and possibilities. After returning home to Chicago in 2001 and under much pressure from my family, I applied to graduate school programs I had absolutely no interest in. I wound up accepting an offer at a prestigious university in Boston. My family was excited and proud, but I wasn't. I attended the orientation for accepted graduate students. Although it was an excellent school and I was honored to have been admitted, I knew going there would be the wrong decision for me. That I was trying too hard to meet other people's expectations of me and pursuing their plans for my life instead of designing my own. After the orientation weekend, I decided to decline the acceptance offer. I didn't know what I wanted to do next, but I knew that I would be miserable if I went. While figuring out what I wanted to do professionally, I needed an income. So I worked in sales at Ann Taylor, a clothing department store, before landing a salaried, somewhat higher paying job with benefits at the Kohler Company's Baker Knapp & Tubbs Furniture Showroom right here in Chicago at the Merchandise Mart. Although neither of these positions was my dream job, they paid the bills, although barely, and I honed valuable skills and competencies while there, assessing people and situations, anticipating needs, social awareness, active listening, diplomacy, conflict resolution, and business writing. This period of my life taught me the necessity of courage. It took courage for me to decline the offer to graduate school with no certainty of what was next and to disappoint my family, who meant so much to me. And in life, it takes courage to go against the grain, to challenge or break with established familial and cultural norms and expectations, and to step out on faith with no guarantee that what you do will work out. But I did just that. And you too will need to demonstrate courage in the decisions you make, regardless of whatever occupation or sector you choose to apply the education and skills you gained at Harris. In spring 2006, I left my position in customer service to accept a position as the assistant to the founding executive director at the Ellen Stone Bellick Institute at Columbia College, Chicago. The institute focused on the intersections of race, gender, and class in the arts and media and in cultural production through research, public programming, and cultural collaborations with civic, arts and culture, and academic institutions across Chicago. For a while, the executive director and I were the only full-time staff. We had a part-time graduate research assistant who also assisted with administrative tasks and a part-time grants writer we worked with on a contractual basis. We were a small but mighty team and overworked, but I enjoyed what I did. During my time at the Institute, I hit the ground running and got a crash course in what it takes to build an organization from the ground up, to identify your mission, vision, and values, and to assess what you do well that creates value and captures the interests of people. I participated in the Institute's strategic planning process, which was a first for me, and I helped develop and engage our advisory board. I did everything from getting coffee and lunch orders to developing public programs and collaborations to co-managing the budget and to drafting communications for press releases. After three years at the Institute, I accepted the position of public programs manager and special assistant to the director at the historic Jane Addams Whole House Museum at the University of Illinois at Chicago. The Whole House Museum, a site of the former Whole House settlement, draws upon the legacy of its founder, Jane Addams, an international peace activist, feminist, and the first American woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, and the other social reformers who lived and worked alongside their immigrant neighbors to create social change on the near west side of Chicago. 
The museum connects the histories of the whole house settlement to present day social justice issues through exhibitions and public programs highlighting the histories of activism, progressive education, and democratic principles of participation and exchange. I loved my job at the Whole House Museum and was truly inspired by the social, political, artistic, and cultural impact the Whole House residents made in their communities, the city, and the country. And I was also greatly influenced by the relationships I made with present day activists, academics, artists, and cultural workers of different backgrounds, walks of life, ages, and experiences. In managing the museum's public programming, I gained even greater insight into and appreciation for the multidisciplinary aspect of social change work. The Whole House residents and the work of the dynamic Whole House Museum illustrate that academics, politics, art, civic engagement, culture, and social justice are not as separate as some people think. Societal change doesn't happen in a vacuum. Every social justice or liberation movement I learned about in life consisted of not only activists and political organizers, but writers, singers, musicians, photographers, and designers. The older I get, the more I appreciate my liberal arts and sciences background and the well-rounded education I got at Harris through a combination of the core curriculum and elective courses. Societal problems are complex and multifaceted, and my appreciation deepened for the value of different disciplines and the creative impulse that resides in me that compels me to think critically, feel deeply, imagine fearlessly, and act boldly. I encourage you to have the mindset and spirit in life in your work, whether you're an economist, sociologist, academic, politician, public administrator, political journalist, researcher, nonprofit leader, or an entrepreneur of a private startup with a social mission. Through my work at the Institute and the Whole House Museum, along with my volunteer work at Affinity Community Services, a social justice organization based on the south side of Chicago that primarily serves and advocates for black LGBTQ people, I identified public policy as the field I wanted to pursue in graduate school and decided to apply to Harris for entry in the fall of 2011. I would like to recognize two phenomenal women who mentored me and were a significant part of my journey. Kim L. Hunt, a fellow Harris alumna and former board member and executive director and former executive director at Affinity, and Lisa Marie Pickens, Affinity's co-founder and former board president and also a fellow alumna of the University of Chicago. They both became dear friends of mine. In fact, Kim and I became best friends. Kim and Lisa both took me under their wings, mentored me, and supported my development as a young feminist advocate and leader who served in several officer positions on the board of directors, including president. I chose public policy to develop a deeper understanding of the web of laws, guidelines, regulations, and actions that individuals, organizations, and governments take that shape people's lives at both the micro and macro levels, the political environment in which public policy lives, and how we, the people, can create and drive legislative and social change. Although the first quarter of my first year at Harris was grueling, and I was initially intimidated by the Quants program, I was enthralled by the academic rigor and applicable concepts of microeconomics and statistics to my life and work, such as seeing beyond the surface and not taking things at face value, reading reports and studies and consuming data with a critical eye, asking probing questions, understanding the various factors, constraints, and aspirations that inform people's behaviors and that impact the choices available to them. That every action we take as policy researchers, policy makers, 
advocates, et cetera, has intended and unintended consequences. And that although some things in life are black or white or good or bad, life is much more complicated the vast majority of the time. And even ideas of good and bad can be highly subjective and fleeting. Which brings me to another lesson I learned that I want you to keep in mind as you continue in your careers or embark on one for the first time. Life is messy and complex. So embrace the messiness and complexity and use them as your clay to create something of substance and value. As Jake Sullivan, an American political advisor and United States national security advisor to President Joe Biden said, quote, in the real world, answers may not be clear cut. There will be messy choices and you're not going to be able to construct a policy response in a neat and tidy way. Being able to listen to other people, even as you stay true to your principles, that's how you actually succeed, close quote. This quote deeply resonates with me and has rung true many times throughout my life and career. In my past and current work, I center respect for others, active listening, and empathy. This quote by Jake Sullivan brought to mind my time as a deputy policy director in the Chicago mayor's office during the administration of former Mayor Rahm Emanuel. I co-led a multi-stakeholder group that created and passed the city's single room occupancy preservation ordinance in December 2014. The SRO ordinance, which aimed to preserve SRO units that house the city's poorest and most unstably housed population, requires notification to residents in an SRO property being listed for sale and information to affordable housing development organizations to provide them an opportunity to consider a preservation investment. This multi-stakeholder coalition consisted of SRO residents, owners, housing activists, social service providers, private and nonprofit mission-driven developers, and multiple City of Chicago departments and sister agencies. The SRO owners were not happy about the activist demands for the city to pass an ordinance. In fact, Many owners argued that it unfairly expected a few property owners in the city to take responsibility for Chicago's shortage of low-income and affordable housing, which they saw as far beyond their control. The creation and passage of the SRO ordinance was a tedious and iterative six-month process, which is a short time frame for public policy wins. Meetings were long and tense, with owners feeling blamed and on the defensive with SRO residents afraid of losing their own housing and sense of community, with housing activists blasting the city for not doing enough to protect and produce more housing for poor and marginalized communities, and with aldermen and the mayor's office feeling that no matter where the city landed on this, folks were going to be upset with us. After multiple meetings, phone calls, negotiations, outreach and politicking, the ordinance was completed. No constituency, however, whether SRO owners, residents, activists, and the city got 100% of what they wanted. Some of the SRO owners were upset with us, but everyone's voices were heard and their perspectives considered and reflected in the ordinance. Everyone had some skin in the game and had to compromise a bit to get this done. The ordinance passed the full city council body and was voted into law in December 2014. I will never forget the cheers and elation of the faces on the SRO residents and activists once the mayor announced the final vote and confirmed the ordinance's passage. They had worked so hard for this victory. For the residents, this wasn't just a policy issue or a theoretical matter. It was their livelihood and the difference between having a place to live and being homeless. The resident organizers and housing advocates hugged each other, and then something else happened, which rarely happens in the mayor's office. The SRO residents and activists and those of us from the mayor's office hugged each other, and it felt wonderful. It was gratifying to be part of doing something that was right and on the same side of activists if only for a brief moment. This is why I chose public policy. 
This is why I went into public service to serve my city. This is why I'm an advocate committed to addressing issues that impact everyday people's lives, that reduces harms and inequities that individuals and groups that are under-resourced and marginalized experience, and that pushes our city closer to being a city for the many, not the few. This process underscores something else that I want to emphasize to you. Public policy is about people. Don't get so lost in theory, data, models, metrics, and assessments that you forget that. Bring your humanity to your work and remember the public and public policy. There is nothing clear cut or easy about trying to preserve SRO housing for vulnerable residents and the residents, activists, and our team at the mayor's office experienced much resistance and criticism, but that wasn't an excuse to do nothing. There may be times when social problems and ills are so grave that you question whether or not the work you do and the actions you take even matter. I don't know about you, but I have been dispirited at times about the pain and suffering in our world. The war and bloodshed in Ukraine and Afghanistan, the attacks against democracy and human and civil rights around the globe, including in the United States, the mass shootings in Buffalo, New York, Uvalde, Texas, and New York City, the increased number of carjackings, gang and drug-related shootings and homicides, trafficking and murders of black girls and women, and the gender-based violence they're experiencing in Chicago and across the country, and inflation, unemployment, a rapidly shrinking middle class, and poverty impacting many across the globe can leave one feeling angry, sad, emotionally exhausted, and perplexed about what to do. When there are times you want to throw up your hands at the weight of all of this, and you feel there is nothing you can do, take a deep breath and give yourself grace. After that moment of grace, however, let your anger and frustration be the fuel that drives you to dig deeper and take action without letting the perfect be the enemy of the good or the better. And remember that each of us here today in this room has the freedoms, rights, privileges, and opportunities we have because of people who did not give up. No matter how impossible and far away progress seemed, no matter how much fear and uncertainty they faced, we are here because of generations of persistence, determination, and action. So let's be that for the next generations to come. This is the vow I have taken and will continue putting into practice in my life. So know that your Harris sister is on this journey with you. Now, many of you probably picked up on some themes in my story about my background and career trajectory. I'd like to briefly recap them in the hopes that they encourage you and touch your heart as I close out. Be courageous and chart your path. While doing so, Know that you're not going to make everyone happy, so don't even try. Plus, how are you going to address some of our countries and world's most serious problems if you can't even take charge of your own life, right? Also, it's okay not to have all the answers, and it's okay if you take a wrong turn, because as we say in Buddhism, no experience is wasted. For those of you who don't know what your next career move, it's okay. For those of you whose paths have been nonlinear, that's okay too. There isn't just one way to forge a meaningful and fulfilling career and life. My story is a prime example. Remember, years ago I declined a graduate school offer, and then I worked in sales and customer service, and then as a public programs manager and executive assistant, and then to policy and public engagement at the mayor's office and the city's commission on human relations, and then to being a program officer at Woods Fund Chicago, a position I started in January 2021. By the way, I absolutely love my job and teammates, so shout out to the Woods Fund peeps. When I look back on my journey, 
I see that every job and lesson learned were valuable and helped prepare me for the next opportunity. Again, no experience was wasted. So don't worry if your career path hasn't been a straight line. Winding roads, nooks and crannies, and occasional cul-de-sacs are far more interesting anyway. All right, next. Just like society, public policy is messy and com complex. Embrace the messiness and complexity and use them as your clay to create something of substance and value. Be curious and pursue your curiosity. Think critically, feel deeply, imagine fearlessly, and act boldly. Don't become detached and impersonal. You're a living and organic being, so act as such. Embrace different disciplines and tap into the creative impulse within you. Don't be parochial and arrogant and think that your discipline or sector has all the answers. It doesn't. Public policy is about people. Don't get so lost in the weeds and theory and data and charts and models and issues, metrics and outcomes that you forget that. And know that every data point on a chart or graph represents human lives. Bring your humanity to your work and remember the public and public policy. Last but not least, reject cynicism and the need for certitude as they will rob you of hope imagination, agency, and a willingness to take risks, and in turn, will deprive you, your communities, and the world of your talents and contributions. I'd like to leave you with a quote by Daisaku Ikeda, a Japanese Buddhist philosopher, educator, author, and nuclear disarmament advocate, who was also the honorary president of the Soka Gakkai International, a lay organization of Nichiren Buddhists that I practice with. He says, a great human revolution in just a single individual will help achieve a change in the destiny of a nation and further can even enable a change in the destiny of all humankind. That single individual is each of you in this room, Harris Class of 2022. I'm so proud of you, and I'm rooting for you. Now go get them. Thank you very much, and congratulations again. Please join me in thanking Kelly Salisbury one more time. I now call upon Dean Catherine Baker and the designated faculty and staff who are here to assist with a presentation of degrees today. We will read the names of all of our 2021-22 graduates, both those who are here with us today and those who celebrate with us from across the world. Jose Lu Luis Aguayo. Just keep going. Sorry, okay. Ostrid Chan. Okay. Amrita Dahl. Abhishek Dar. Lindsay Doolittle. <laughs> Elizabeth. Watts Freeman, Alba Garcia, Christine Jackman, Rameshura Nand Ja, Minji Kong, Tracy Magure Kebata. Ambika Kana Samperna Kesnavis Kisu Kim T 
Tong Lee. Carrie McCartan. Maruf Mia. Subashmita Mishra. Shashank Mithil. Sino Kukanya Namtandaso Moyo. Kyle Lewis Rourke. Omar Sigel Martinez. <laughs> Cassandra Shand. Vashali Umrakur. Tristam Wolf. Caitlin Yu. Ria Zaponta. Ji Chuan Jung. Leon Yan Jung. Dean Baker, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Arts by the Board of Trustees through our dual master's degree program with the London School of Economics. The trustees have conferred upon you the degree of Master of Arts, and I express the hope that your work will improve our understanding of public policy. Congratulations. Benjamin Antonio, Amber Burkhart, Michael Joseph Butler. Many of these people aren't here because they're in London. <laughs> Christopher Duig. Adam Dunning, Mats Franzian, Joanna Adair Hull, Chin Hisan Lin, Peter Damian Ray, Jay Shirley, Anupreet Singh, Sudavir Singh, William Snyder, Erdenbelig Sedev. Lisa Weichman Harries, Caroline Nemawa Wesanga. Dean Baker, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Arts by the Board of Trustees through our evening master's program. Not yet. <laughs> the trustees have conferred upon you the degree of Master of Arts, and I express the hope that your work will improve our understanding of public policy. Congratulations. Reda Abu Reda. A calm. Evangeline Alpujanis. Elizabeth Ampong. Christina Antar. Stephanie Arias. Joe Lynn Atkinson. Allison Botter Ingle, Salma Beneni, Nikhel Bahatia, Sakib, Sakib Bati, Alyssa Carmita Bowles, Marioline. Brugaling, 
Robert Joseph Bruning. Haley Burnett. Gillian Richards Campbell. Ty Timothy Campbell. Jody Cantrell. Vernita Elena Cockrell. Jennifer Marie Collings. Samantha Constance. Rebecca Maroon D'Amico. Eileen Claire Donovan. Rebecca Dunn. Amy Lynn Dupuy. Andrew Eads. Michael Charles Eggerding. Carla Escobar. Safea A. Fauzi. Caitlin Shay Feldy. Sion Flowers. Thomas Spencer Gary. Mary Gibson. Hannah Miriam Green. Elizabeth Greenberg. Jonathan Delante Hill. Eloise Hyman. Brian Jan. Jake Johnson. Jacob Stephen Kaplan. Gregory Karpovics. Robert Kearney. Carl Kemp. Scott Kennedy. Matthew Kling. Laura Cook. Coke, my apologies. Laura Coke. Emma Colander. Siamala Krishnam Seti. Molly Kukic. Christy Lacey. Olivia Lutwak. Julie Lynn. Jordan McLuhan. Tamara Millich. Kevin Monroe. Yasin Murati. Deontay Moore. Ashley Nickerson. Molly Siobhan Nugent. Olivia Oshimene. <laughs> Philip Pasina. Natalia Papilla Fula. Shakina Perry. Yasmin Pisano Luna. <laughs> Trevor James Porter. Juliana Rushkey. Lorena Reyes. Rahat Sajwani. Timothy Ryan Sampi. Jacob Dylan Schultz. Timothy So. Max Limer Strumman. Ajika Nia Sumter. Anthony Searles. Farah Tanvir Najum. Michael Torres. Chanel Turbidis. Nadej Uwamba. 
Jorge Valdivia Chancola. Michael Anthony Venosi. Adrian Vargas. Jose Yusef Vidal. Alejandra Villa. Richard Wade. Jacqueline Webster. Becky Whitehurst. Tila Marvia Williams. Jeffrey Grant Wingo. Darcy Young. Denise Young. Frank Zhu. Dean Baker, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Arts with a certificate in research methods. Are we still doing EMP? <laughs> Sorry. I'll read slower. Yeah, I'll go slower. Lesson learned. And now, Dean Baker, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Arts with a certificate in research methods by the Board of Trustees. The trustees have conferred upon you the degree of Master of Arts with a certificate in research methods, and I express the hope that your work will improve our understanding of public policy. Congratulations. Lian Chun, Chi Chung, Jing Yua Lei, John Dent Marshall. Mei Tung Ren. Tyler Schumacher. Xiao Shi Wong. Andy Shia. Si Ya. Winnie Yi. Dean Baker, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Public Policy by the Board of Trustees. The trustees have conferred upon you the degree of Master of Public Policy, and I express the hope that your work will guide public policy towards the enhancement of public good. Congratulations. Junaid Ahmad. Kashif Ahmed. Tala Ali Hassan. <laughs> Kofi Jan. <laughs> Deasi Surya and Darina. <laughs> Uzamaka Christy Anezwe. <laughs> Juan Carlos Apitz. Artist Zone. Dewey Sayo 
Ardiando, Austin Atterbury Kiernan. Andrea Avendano, Ungi Christopher Beck, Russell Owen Bailey, Adonia Bekele, Justin Samuel Franklin Berg. Noah Berman, Jose Luis Betancourt Cardenas, Rukmini Bagra, Shaye Elizabeth Biddle. Leah Blitstein, Sarah Elizabeth Bauscher, Grace Emily Bridges, Claire Grace Brindley, Caroline Calhoun. Kao Yu Chen, Russell Carter, Alexandria Emily Cedargren, Han Chun, Alisa Shi'i Chun, Chen, Chun Shi, Yingja. Chun, Yulin Chun, Chung Ram, Shuang Iris Chung, Jin Choi, Sebastian Clavijo. Andrew Cloutier, Aiden Coffey, Miriam Meyer Cohen, Zachariah Boyd B. Crayon, Brian Craighead. Brian Cronin, E. Fan Dai, Muja Dalawati, Dinesh Das Gupta, Brian Davis. William Day, <laughs> Rebecca Jordan Delay, <laughs> Zian Den, Claire DeCio, <laughs> Eris Javon Donaldson. Giovanni Dorsonville, Milena Dovali Delgado, Thomas Samuel Dow, Arohi Drabu, Rongchua Du. 
Yi Fei Du, Mac Emery, Natasha Angelina, Ada Eransoy, Erong Fan. Zijing Fan, Yolanda Yue Tang Fang, Sabrina Fields, Jacob Foos, Anna Forte, Alexandra Freeling. Jingxiao Fu, Victor Gamara, Austin Ghana Tolentino, Gia Gao, Davina Ghosh. Leandro Gracepan, Spencer Goodwill, Maria Charlene Geriba, Norman Gua Tianxing. Francisco Haddad, Tadashi Hagia, Jeho Hum, Daniel Hartman, Alana Heyer, Isabel Hershey, Li Kai Hu. Hafit Jadi Husodu, Bura Lu Jap, Rita Grace Jefferson, Insong Jong, Linhan Jiang, Victor Jimenez. Zhu Jing, Michaela Marin Jonki, David Johnson, Kelsey Johnson, Vera Yonsdatir, Min Chen Zhu. Bethany Judson, Hirokasu Kane, Amanda Kimberly Katz, Joy Amotayo E. Coyote, Joseph Ritter Kensak, Rana Khalil, Yuichi Kikuzawa, Ongi Kim, Jonah Klein Barton, Timothy Klusner, Shaohan Kong. Henry Robert Kopetsky, Michael Legrone, Morgan Landers, Jake Lang, 
Jose Lara. Aliyah Larasati. Abdul Latif. Adam Leader Smith. Monica Lee. Dion Jordan Lamel. Sophie Lemish. Alexis Levato. Bowen Lee. Chunshi Lee. Rinjun Lee. Shang Yu Lee. Shin Yu Lee. Yunhan Lee. Ning Ning Lin. Jongji Lin. Kairon Leo. Zachi Leo. Stephanie Loru Carvalho. Shinyu Lo. Yushin Lo. Chongfan Lu. Hongming Lu. Shushi Lu. Ba Ning Ma. Emily McQuarrie. Emily Claire Madalena. Adriana Martea. Shah Shahaya Martinez. Benjamin Matz. Thomas Emery McCall. Bradley McCandless. Ryan Michael McGinnis. Sean McSweeney. Anna Meehan. Sarah Marie Maring. Julia Miller. <laughs> you Rain Ming. Sean Mizushima. Kusala Moligoda. William Morgan. Arjun Mota. Shrikar Nagasubramanyam. Christian Navarro. John Ney. Zachary Obsfeld. Rory Owen Carr O'Carroll. Caitlin O'Hara. <laughs> Kayla Okarski. <laughs> Brianna Olson. <laughs> Taylor Ortiz. <laughs> Grace Elizabeth Victoria Oxley. Emily Pape. <laughs> Neelam Patel. Chelsea Paga. 
Daniel James Paler. Daniela Perez Hiraldo. Michaela Pernetti. Joshua Perry. Adith Pillai. William Pitch. Sophia Potes Arendondo. Rahul Purwar. Danny Chi. Weiling Chien. Ben Lin Q. Tian Q. Meng Shi Xu. Abraham Rashid. Justin Ratcliffe. Evan Patrick Reese. Thank you. Alyssa Wrights. <laughs> Emily Rice. <laughs> Antonella Rivera. <laughs> Layla Roberts. <laughs> Malcolm Robinson Campbell. Marley Rosario. Kartik Narish Sabu. Andrea Salas Laura. Ernest Augustin Salgado II. Margaret Wheeler. Sanderson, <laughs> Dylan Robert Schaefer, Nicholas Schwartz, Elizabeth Scott, Nina Marie Cedeno, Victoria Bernadette Sellis. Ru Young Sho, An Shin Shun, Maya Shun, Sanjana Shanoi, Mark Shepherd, Jia Sha, Shivani Shukla. Claire Power Sigelko. Jordan David Wayne Smith. Max Snyder. <laughs> Hun Ki Song. Tian Jin Song. Brenda Soriano Villa. Sylvie Spiewak. <laughs> Dr. Amet Srivastana, Srivastava. <laughs> Hope Stanfill. <laughs> Eric Stoltz. Yuening Su. <laughs> Zalu Su. Di Yang Soon, Madison Victoria Swope, Chu Ki Tan, Joanna Shuhan Tong, Oscar Longsha Tao, Tao Li, Yu Tao, Rita Tang. <laughs> Bargavi Thakur <laughs> 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 
Cody Thompson. Tanvi Tulu. Nicholas Teza. Natalia Vieira Tosi. Guillermo Antonio Trifogli Wong. Ernesto Truki. We good? Ana Camila Vasquez Leon. <laughs> Veronica Venturo. <laughs> Akshay Vikas. <laughs> Ellie Vorhaven. <laughs> Robert Wilatka. Nicole Brittany Walker. <laughs> Chuanyi Wong. Hungi Wong. Jia Yu Wong. Ling Lu Wong. Wang Kamin. Meng Wang. Tiaran Wang. Wenshu Wang. Xin Yu Wang. Yan Wang. Inying Wang. Zashin Wong. Kiyang Wong. Zayi Wong. Samir Shafi Waraich. Ian Andrew Warren. Julian Weber. Shinyu Wei. Heather Weller. James Thomas Womond. Roland Bernard White. Jason Winnick. Catherine Ann Witt. <laughs> Hillary Beth Wolf. <laughs> Betty Wong. <laughs> Yi Wei Wu. <laughs> Fan Mei Shia. Sha Shia. Yue Shia. Yanan Shu. Yumang Shu. Abhishek Yadav. Aaron Yancey. Jia Yi Yang. Chun Lei Yao. Yeah, Huai Chen. June Juan Yum. John Zaleski. Chunza Jong. Handi Jong. Ziaoya Simon Jong. Katian Jong. Kiwen Jong. Jong Xin Yu. Xin Shu Zhang. Ying Shu Zhang. Zhang Zhang. Zahua Zhang. 
Moong Yia Zhou. Yao Xin. Xin Yi Zhao. Ya Meng Zhao. Din Yuan Zhou. Xiao Tan Zhou. Zhou. Jian Xin Zhu. Zuareng Zhu. James Jordan Zimmerman. And Angelica Zoki. Dean Baker. Dean Baker, it is my honor to present these students who have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. They have been awarded the degree of Master of Science in Computational Analysis and Public Policy by the Board of Trustees. The trustees have conferred upon you the degree of Master of Science in Computational Analysis and Public Policy, and I express the hope that your work will improve our understanding of public policy. Congratulations. Onel Abreu. Silky Agrawal. Natalie Ayers. <laughs> Valeria Balsa. <laughs> Shashank Bardwaj. <laughs> Katen Brewster. <laughs> Domingo Jose Carbonet. Eric Chandler. Richard Calvin Chang. Andres Cruceta Nieto. Nick Gondek. Har. Jin Young, Christine Joy Ibaraki, Sayada Jaisha, Jacob Jameson, Trumala Kagundi, Caroline Kinnan. Jacob Lair, Brenda Lee, Chi Wei Lean, James Midkiff, Maria Milos, Sophia Eve Malauer. Gabriel Deckert Morrison. Ana Sofia Munoz Valadez. William James O'Farrell. Michelle Chloe Orden. Young Joe O. Oh. Gabriela Palacios Gomez. Taryn Cutler Peterson. Rahim Rasul. Alexander Roach. 
Javier Rojas. Hugo Salas Rodriguez. Antonia Sanhuesa. Carly Ann Shippitz. Sabrina Sedevic. Shai Slotsky. Bo Smith. M. Merritt Smith. Piyush Tank. Dennis Tokmako. Marielle Vihers Benuet. Kelly Yang. Fumi Yoshikoshi. Dean Baker, the students I now present have attained scholarly, scholarly distinction in advanced studies and prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy, I have the honor to present these recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy as conferred by the Board of Trustees. The trustees have conferred upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, and I welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Congratulations. Mariela Gonzalez Neto. Valerie Michaelman. <laughs> Ruan. Zhao Song. I would now like to introduce Dean Catherine Baker to make closing remarks. of 2022, as Dean of the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy, I have the great pleasure of offering you my sincere congratulations. The stakes have never been higher in public policy, from the pandemic to climate change to global conflict to income inequality to public safety to threats to democratic institutions. As you reflect on your accomplishments, I'm encouraged to know that we have the best and the brightest minds in each of you working in public policy, and wow, are we counting on you. Indeed, this was Irving Harris's intent in founding our school three decades ago, and the legacy each of you carries forward as graduates of this great institution. On behalf of the Harris School, I couldn't be happier or prouder to celebrate you today and to call you alumni. The world is now yours, so go make a difference. 
Thank you and congratulations. the ceremony. Please remain seated until the graduates and stage party formally process. Again, thank you very much for coming and a hearty congratulations to our graduates. Thank <laughs> you. 